Uh, so Neil Mellor and Paul Robinson are going to predict the 24-25 Premier League season. Neil is going to go first. Who do you think is going to finish 20th and bottom? Man United. Sorry, no, that's where I want to go down. Um, who do I think? Um, I think it will be one of the promoted teams. No surprise there. I've gone for Southampton. Now, they got promoted via the playoffs last season. And the reason being, if you look at the recruitment from Southampton this summer, they've lost a couple of uh, key players in terms of Shea Adams, Stuart Armstrong. They've brought in the experience of Adam Lallana, uh, a defender in Harwood Bellis, Ben Brereton, who thinks good. They were the 14th 1-4, best defensive record in the Championship. Now, if they're leaking goals in the Championship, I don't see enough recruitment there to have helped sort that out come the Premier League. So, I think they're going to ship in a lot of goals this season. So, uh, that's that's my reasoning. I don't think they'll be good enough defensively and they will be bottom of the league for me. Southampton. Uh, they have signed a goalkeeper who is six foot eight, so he should be good at claiming a cross <laughs> or two. Right, so... Neil well, Miller's gone for Southampton in the Premier League these days. Isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Neil Miller's gone for Southampton to finish bottom. Paul Robinson, who do you have for finishing twentieth? I think from eighteenth, nineteenth, twentieth. I think we're in a pretty much in agreement of the three teams. I think it's just in what order. I've gone for Ipswich simply because of the lowest budget. They've come from League One through League One through the Championship, um, and I think it's going to be a rude awakening from in the Premiership. They're going to have one of the lowest, if not the lowest, budget signed Liam Delap. Connor Townsend with a bit of experience in there. Six signings, Amari Hutchinson, lowest budget, done a little bit of player trading, but I just don't think the squad that they've got that's coming out of the Championship is strong enough to cope in the Premier League. So for me, bottom of the Premier League come the end of the season, Ipswich Town. See, I, I think Ipswich do have a slight chance of being the Sheffield United of when they first came up and the Leeds United and carrying that great momentum. It could be feast or famine for Ipswich, but you've gone for them uh, to finish... 20th and bottom and back to the championship. Right, let's go up a position. Uh, Paul, who have you got for finishing above Ipswich and 19th? I've got Neil's 20th, Southampton, for, for all the reasons that he said. Uh, you look at the recruitment, you look at the, the goals that they conceded in the championship last season with Russell Martin, the way that they play. Yeah, he's got them playing a decent style of football. Uh, came up through the playoffs, beat Leeds in the playoff final. And I, I just think it'll be a struggle for all three promoted teams this season. I really do. Um, Leicester, the FFP and PSR charge looming over them with a points deduction potentially coming for them. But for me, Southampton, they're, they're in the bottom three and they go down 19th. OK, let's see if you both choose the, 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 the same two to finish in the bottom two. Neil, 19th for you in the Premier League. I've picked a team who this will be their third season in the Premier League. I think they've hovered for the last two seasons previous and I think this time they go down. I've gone for Nottingham Forest yes. to go down as 19th. I I know there's a lot of problems sort of off the pitch with points deductions. I just think the third season will be the one that they go down. I think they've, they've struggled for the previous two, 16th, 17th uh, goals. Low, fourth lowest scorers last season. Looked at a few of the pre-season results. Nothing there really to excite me in the transfer market as well. Lost a few experienced players. I mean, how they spent 30 million quid on Elliot Anderson from Newcastle, who's never scored a Premier League goal, was, was a strange one. But um, yeah, there's not enough in that Forest squad for me to stay up this season. So, so I've got them down as 19. Of all the teams that last season were thankful that Sheffield United and Burnley and Luton Town were in the Premier League, Nottingham Forest were the ones who were there uh, at the top of the list because they finished fourth bottom at 32 points. Any other season, you think they would have potentially been relegated. So, you've gone for relegation for Nottingham Forest this time around. You've had them 19th. Now, who is also going to join them on their trip back to the Championship? Neil Mellor, who do you have for finishing 18th in the Premier League? I have picked another newly promoted team. Now, I think this team will have a good go. I think they'll be good to watch this season. I think they will just go down, but, but fighting, not way bottom. So I've gone for Ipswich Town. Uh, I think they'll be good to watch. I think the best signing they made this summer was the manager, to keep hold of the manager. I don't think that speculation will go away. I think he'll be a wanted man throughout the season, and I think that might be a little bit unsettling. They've, they've bounced League One to Prem in two seasons. They're a big football club. They'll get close to 30,000, big crowds will be made up to be back in the Premier League. But I think that quality will just be lacking with what they have in the squad. And the recruitment suggests 
they're going to have to battle hard to stay in the Premier League this season. They might catch a couple unaware, but I don't think they'll have enough longevity in that quality. So Ipswich, for me, 18th. Uh, thank you. So, uh, if uh, Paul Robinson goes for Nottingham Forest to finish 18th, it does mean that you agree on the same three sides to be relegated this coming Premier League season back to the Championship. Paul Robinson, 18th in the final relegation place. Who are you picking? I've got a big question mark over these two teams. I've actually written my table out and I've got Nottingham Forest in the bottom three. <laughs> but it all depends on Leicester's PSR and FFP. I think Leicester are looking at a minimum of four-point deduction after what they've been found guilty of. We're waiting for the tribunal, the independent hearing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It might just be a little bit of an uphill battle. If Leicester don't get a points deduction, let's say they don't get a points deduction at this point. We're not trying to predict what's going to happen because with these independent rulings, we don't know what's going to happen. Anything could happen with the points. I am going to go Nottingham Forest. I think they've they've circled the drain too many times, haven't they? And what do we always say? If you circle the drain, you're bound to drop in it at some point. So for me, Forest have circled the drain too many times. Lost a lot of good players, lost Cuyate, lost Felipe, lost Tavares. Let's send a few loans back. Just the amount of trade, of player trading at Forest for me as well. It's at some point it's it's not got to work. I thought Marilla was outstanding last season. Gibbs White was outstanding and was still in a territory where the transfer window is still open. Um so with Marillo, with Gibbs White, if they hold on to them, they've got a chance. But I think Forrest just circled that drain one too many times. So with no previous discussion between the pair of you, we've actually chosen the same three sides all to be relegated, uh, just slightly different order, but you've both gone for Ipswich Town, Nottingham Forest and Southampton to be relegated. Those are the teams that the guys are fancying to head back to the Championship in about nine months' time. So who is the first of the sides that you think is just going to stay up? So Paul Robinson, 17th and survival in the Premier League. Leicester, just... They've lost a couple of decent players at Dewsbury Hall, All Brighton, Ian Nacho, recruitment, Deco Dover, Reed, Coley. Uh, they brought a couple of decent players in with Steve Cooper. I think it's a shrewd appointment with the manager. Um, he did a really good job at Forest with what he had. I think his hands were tied a little bit with the off the field um, interference of player recruitment, player sales, player trading. And I think he'd be the man to, to keep Leicester up. I think Leicester are a good, solid football club. They've been a Premier League club not that long ago. I think with Harry Winks, who was excellent in the Championship last season. And I do think their home form um, will be enough to keep them in the league. You fancy them to go away and pick up results as well. But I think it will be it'll be close with them. And I think the thing that the reason that I've put them in 17th and only just staying up is that potential looming points deduction. OK, so Leicester just staying up and they will settle for that. Any team who comes up from the Championship, regardless of how long you've been in the Premier League before or whether you've actually won it before, if you're coming up from the Championship, survival in the first season back is always key. So they would probably settle for that, although they'd obviously uh, want to, to be a few places higher up. Right, Neil Meller, 17th in survival in the Premier League. Who are you picking? I'm going to pick a team which might surprise you. It's not Everton because they've been there there about the last few seasons. I'm going to go for Leicester, and, and the reason being similar to Paul <laughs> is the, the points deduction is going to be a problem for Leicester. It really is. So I think they're going to be hovering down there all season, newly promoted. They were a surprise when they got relegated a couple of seasons ago from the Premier League. Vardy, he's 37. He got 20 goals last season. Surely he can't be the main man up top. But I think the the managerial change. Uh, won't affect them too much because I think Steve Cooper's style will be will be similar. So he inherits a decent squad and, and the best squad out of the three teams coming up there, despite losing a couple of players in Dewsbury Hall being one key player. So I, th I think Leicester will have just enough to stay up. So I've got them as 17th. OK, again, survival for the Foxes, which they'll be happy with. Now, I think we get to the part of the Premier League where this is really difficult to call. Anywhere from, well, effectively 8th all the way down to 16th. You've got so many teams uh, that are kind of around, you know, uh, mid-table, just below, uh, which this is where I think it gets incredibly difficult. You basically pick the same four teams so far. So let's go for 16th. Uh, Neil Meller, who are you picking? A team that have finished 15th, 17th and 16th the last three seasons. I'm going to go for Everton. They are absolutely comfortable in those sort of areas. They had points deduction last year, which obviously they, they managed to stay up from, which was great. They've lost Anana, which was a blow for, for them. Calvert-Lewin looks like he's staying. Will he be fit? How many games will he be fit for? Top scorer with eight goals last season. Everton, that's not enough. They need to be getting somebody in double figures. Well beaten against Coventry pre-season, 3-0, looked way off it. Then beat Motherwell, 6-0 from uh, the SPL. So uh, I think Everton will have a season, again, of, of struggles. 
Um, yeah, I mean, getting Harrison back in alone from Leeds was a decent signing. So uh, just enough to stay up for me, Everton, this year in 16th. Yeah, uh, as a Sheffield United pers uh, perspective, it'd be very good to see Illiman and Jai because he is a quality player, just to see how he fares in the Premier League and whether he can produce a little bit of magic for Everton. Everton, who finished 15th last season, you've got them as 16th this season. Uh, what about you, Paul Robinson? Who is 16th in the forthcoming Premier League season? I predict better for Everton this season. I think the off the field scenario is rumbling on, but I predict better for them. I've got Wolves. I've got Wolves down there. I think it was only a great start to last season that probably saved them in a league position. They finished 14th last season, lost the captain, Max Kilman, uh, made five signings. We know about the budget. We know that Gary O'Neill's hands are pretty tied with the budget at Wolves. And I listen, like I said, I think it was the start to last season which gave them the opportunity to finish as high as 14th towards the end of the season. They, they, they petered out a little bit. And I've got Wolves down there. Wolves in 16th for me. OK, so Wolves, who finished 14th uh, last season in the Premier League, uh, predicted to finish uh, 16th by Paul Robinson. So now we're getting into uh, teams that could be quite a few points clear of the relegation zone, but still loitering around 15th. That's where we're heading next. And Paul, who you got for 15th in the Premier League? No, I'm going to say a surprise for you, but it's not a surprise for you because they finished 16th last season. Brentford, <laughs> it's another team that have been in the Premier League a long time. And I think teams are starting to work out the way to play against them. Thomas Frank's very, very organised the way that he sets them up defensively. Mo majority of the time plays with the back three. Um, they've lost Mope, gone back on loan. Regulian's gone back on loan. David Rea, obviously gone to Arsenal. And I think the thing is, Igor Thiago, who they brought in to potentially replace Ivan Toney, the, the striker, got a couple of goals in pre-season, but he's going to be out for a long term. Now he's going to be out for six months. So the striker they bought to replace Ivan Toney has gone into the last 12 months of his contract. That saga is going to rumble on, whether it's Ivan Tony is going to leave, whether they're going to weigh up the option, thinking maybe it's cheaper to keep him for 12 months and let him go on a free at the end of the season for him to have an impact. But he's not going to be happy doing that. I just think there might be a little bit too much unrest in the early part of the season. I think Brentford will struggle. But I think, listen, they finished 16th last year, so it might not be too much of a big surprise. Brentford uh, 15th. Yeah, I do wonder if Brentford are one of those sides that 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 after a while just... just Punching above your weight is going to catch up with them at some point. I do wonder if Brentford, a bit like how Swansea did it in years gone by, where they came up, they got into the Premier League, they were staying in the Premier League, and then suddenly it just catches up with them. And this is a season where uh, Brentford may struggle a little bit. But again, survival is always uh, the number one priority for Brentford. Uh, 15th then is Brentford for Paul Robinson. Neil Meller, who you gone for 15th? Uh, I think in the Premier League this year, you're going to see six or seven teams in the sort of bracket where you're thinking... They could finish as high as sort of 11th, 12th, or as low as sort of 16th, 17th. I think they'll they'll all maybe just have enough to be away from the relegation places, but but not good enough to be in the top half. And I've gone for Bournemouth. Um, they, I know they, they did well last season. I like the manager, really like him. He got them going, didn't he? And maybe a little bit over-reliant on Solanke's goals. He got 19 last season. There's speculation that he won't be at the football club this season, which would be a massive blow for Bournemouth, the goals that he scored. So uh, I think they have a good identity about them. And even if he did go, I think they'd have enough to stay up. But I think it'd be a massive blow. And that's why I don't think they'll finish as high as 12th, what they did last season. I've got them as 15th. Yeah, their highest ever points tally last year, 48th. I uh, wonder if expectation has risen down at Bournemouth. But again, one of those sides where you go, look at the start of the season, what is the priority? Just being in the Premier League for another season is priority. So Bournemouth are 15th for Neil Mellor. Comfortably safe Premier League for another season. Right, on to 14th then. Uh, 14th last season was Wolves. Already placed 16th by Paul Robinson. Uh, who was 14th in the Premier League this season for you, Neil Mellor? They finished 10th last season. They finished 11th the season before. They finished 12th the season before. Whenever I think of sort of 13th, 14th in the Premier League, this is the first team I think about. Crystal Palace. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they're just always there or thereabouts, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, what I would say is that they've lost Elise. Eh? There's yeah. a lot of talk about losing Gay, and you're thinking, oh, they're two key players. Well, then Eze's still there at the moment. There hasn't been too much speculation about him leaving. Mateta's been at the Olympics, so you know you could say he's going to be up to speed, and he's done all right there for France. But um, yeah, I just think Palace will have enough to be away from the relegation places, but they'll go on them runs where they just don't win for five or six games. And they'll be mid-table. So I've got Palace as 14th. 
Yeah, Michael Alise is going to be a massive miss. He was the Premier League's most efficient attacker last season. Uh, no player with a better goals and assist ratio than Michael Alise's over 90 minutes, which was uh, 1.13. So it's a huge miss for Crystal Palace. I like where they're shopping, though. The book we had from Barcelona and the book Kamada in... Uh, from uh, Lazio. So I like where Crystal Palace are now shopping uh, with uh, Klasner now in charge. So 14th and safe for Crystal Palace. What about you, Mr. Robinson? Who you got 14th? Well, your stats good about Elise, but he only played about six games. So, I mean, his, his stats are going to be good in that amount of games, isn't he? He missed half the season. But no, I like where you were coming from with it. Um, 14th for me, similar description when you, when you talk about these, these type of teams. It's not Palace. I've got Palace slightly higher. Fulham for me. Fulham finished last season in 13th. I don't think there's enough goals in that side. Bro, you're going back to Chelsea. Um, Smith Rowe's a good signing for them. Um, I just don't see enough of them. Session Young going back in there, it'll be a good signing down that left-hand side for them. But I, you, when, when you watch them, you, you just watch a mid-table Premier League team. And as you rightly said at the opening part of this segment, from probably 10th to 16th, we could throw all these clubs up in the air and see how they land, and they could land in any order in those league positions. It's you know, it's 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 a shot in the dark as to where they finish. But this it's it's predicting that that type of group of teams depending on on, on the order that they finish in. Yeah, but for me, Fulham drop a place this year, thirteenth last season, fourteenth this season. Yeah, they were in the uh, clump of teams that were Crystal Palace, Brighton, Bournemouth, Fulham, Wolves, all finished around about two or three points. Uh, last season uh, all in that clump of around about 10th all the way down to 14th so Fulham uh, 14th a place lower than last season for Paul Robinson so we move up to 13th now which last season was where Fulham were uh, Paul Robinson who you, have you gone for 13th in the Premier League and it's the team that finished 12th another team that have dropped a place Bournemouth um, I think they've got a little bit more than the likes of Fulham Brentford Wolves and I think that just gives them the edge. I think that their home form will be key. I thought they've got some really good results at home. It's, it's a difficult place to go, get a result. But the big thing with, with Bournemouth is Solanke. I mean, he's had one decent season. He's got a huge price tag on his head. I'm not so sure I'd be overly keen if Spurs bought him and paid the price that they're going to need to, to pay for him at this stage after only doing it for one season. Yeah, decent player, big, tall, imposing striker. But his record over three or four seasons doesn't match up to the one of last season. Well, they lost. They lost Kiefer Moore, signed Sinistera on a on a um, on a permanent from Leeds. So not a lot of player trading. So I can pretty much see Bournemouth doing what they did last year, and they they won in clusters last year, didn't they? They seem to go on a, a winning run of like four or five games. Then they wouldn't win for four or five games, and I think that's pretty much the the state of their season again. But I like the way that they play under their manager, and I tipped him to be sacked at the start of last season. So I will take my hat off to him. He did a great job. He did a great job, and you're right. Uh, Bournemouth were one of those sides where you either won or you lost, and that's enough because you pile the points on the board in a good month, and then you you don't win for a few, and then you pile the points back on if you win three of the next four, and that is enough to guarantee, uh, you know, mid-table safety really in the Premier League. Uh, so Bournemouth thirteenth uh, for Paul Robinson, uh, Bournemouth for fifteenth for Neil Mellor. So who are you choosing for thirteenth in the Premier League? Yeah, Paul's already mentioned them. I've got Fulham down as as thirteenth. Uh, Top scorer last year was Muniz with nine goals. This is their third season in, in the Premier League and they've done all right. They've been away from the relegation places. I think the best thing that Fulham have is the manager. I think the longer they can keep him, the longer they will stay away from their relegation places. As soon as they lose Silva, I think then they become in trouble. Fulham. I really do believe that. I think they lost three key players this summer. We have to mention that. In Tim Ream, in terms of the leadership in the dressing room, in terms of tossing the centre half, who's gone to Chelsea, I think that was a that is a big blow for them. But the biggest, who for me was their best player, Polina, who's gone to uh, Bayern Munich. Wow, what a player he was! So that is a massive miss for Fulham. But but I still think they'll just have enough. They've beaten Benfica in pre season, narrowly lost to Sevilla. So um, yeah, I don't think there'll be too much excitement around Fulham this season. Mid table, thirteenth for me. Yeah, it could be a bit of a rebuild for Fulham. Uh, as I said, they've, they've lost some really influential players and we'll see how the likes of Ryan Sessegnon, good players, but can they kind of, uh, you know, replicate how solid Fulham have been recently? Polino is a massive miss, of course. Right, we're edging ever closer to the top half of the Premier League, but we're still just below at the moment. We're looking at 12th now. And Neil Meller, who are you picking? Gone Wolves. Gone Wolves. Um, 14th last season. 13th before, 10th before. I thought Gary O'Neill did a very good job there last year. VAR killed Wolves. They'd have been probably in Europe if it wasn't for VAR last season. Absolutely disgraceful, some of the decisions. Missed a couple of key yeah. players, Neto being one of them. You know, I really do like Neto. I think they need a full season out of him. 
Cunha was top scorer like him as well. They've beaten Leipzig 3 0 in pre season. Hey, hey, Wolves aren't a bad side. Lost Kilman in the centre half, but I think Wolves will be uh, mid table, and that's why I've got them in 12th place. Yeah, they've signed a, a, quite a few young players as well. Uh, Tommy Doyle's joined permanently from uh, Man City. He is 22. They've got Rodrigo Gomez. Portuguese, a Portuguese player signing for Wolves. Who'd have thought it? He's 21. They've got Jorgen Strand, 24. And they also built, uh, beat uh, Chelsea to sign in uh, Pedro Lima, 18 years of age. So uh, Wolves are certainly building for the future. 12th and fine and safe for them, says uh, Neil Meller. You had Wolves of 16th, Paul, this coming season. Who you got for 12th? I have got the Toffees. I think the Everton team will be a lot better than they were last season. I just think you look at the points deduction, you look at what they had to put up with last season, you just hope from, even from a neutral fan's point of view, for for these Everton supporters, you hope there's just a little bit of respite and a little bit of stability off the field so the manager gets an opportunity to use the transfer market to bring in players and that all this talk about debt and the club being taken over and going into administration, you look at what Sean Dyche has done in the last two years, it's been nothing short of incredible keeping that team in the Premier League with what he's had to deal with and the points deductions. There's going to be no points deductions this season for Everton. Not at the moment, anyway. Um, should this situation drag on towards January, we might be talking again about different things off the field. But for me, I think the squad's a lot better than the last two seasons suggest. And I don't think this season is a season where Everton are going to be circling the drain. No points deductions. Jack Harrison back in on loan. Ilian Dye from Sheffield United. Can't rely on Calvert-Lewin all seasons, carrying you know the goal scoring. Ilian Dye will be a good addition to that squad. He'll get goals, he'll score goals. They might not be the prettiest to watch, but I think they'll be effective. A lot better season predicted for me for Everton. 12. Uh, yeah, I think, and, and also Everton fans would settle for that because I think they're fed up of having seasons where they're just constantly looking over their shoulder at the relegation zone saying, are we going to get sucked into this? When are we going to pull clear? I think they will be happy for 12 and just a, a nice, calm season where it looks like you're going to stay up uh, from pretty early on. Uh, so Everton rise from 15th last season to 12th this season, according to Paul. Now we're just on the cusp of the top half, 11th. Paul, who are you picking? The usual suspects, Palace. I mean, they had a really good finish to last season, finished in 10th. Um, they've got Saar in, Ismail Saar, he's come in, lost Elise. James Tompkins has gone, a bit of experience, gone out the side. Gay is continuously linked heavily with a move to Newcastle, um, a record fee for a defender. It's looking likely. Uh, Eze as, as well, linked to, with links away from the club. Like what the manager's done, immediate change in results, immediate change in style regardless of losing those players, because let's not forget, without Elise and Eze, they played the majority of, of the season last season without those two players. Without Gay, he'll be a big miss, but I think they've got enough, and I've got Palace just to top that bottom half in 11th. Thank you. You pretty much have named all the same teams, just in a slightly different order. And if I'm looking at your selections here, Paul, the only side that's not been mentioned so far by Neil Meller is Brentford. Uh, and I'm just wondering if this is the team that he's going to be choosing for 11th, because if it is, you've pretty much effectively chosen all the same sides. So, 11th place in the Premier League. Neil, who are you gone for? Brentford. Uh, yeah, not surprised, that. <laughs> um, <laughs> the same part of last I, I, I think they'll be, be better than last season. They were, they were too close to the relegation places for their liking. I think Tony will stay and I think he'll become an important player for them again this season with the goals. I think they missed him Wemo for a lot of games last year, really like him as well. So I think Brentford will be a better side than what they were last season. But no surprise, again, they're the sort of side where you could say they could finish 14th, 15th, 10th, 11th. So I've got them as high as 11th because of the Tony factor. I think he will stay and I think he'll be a really important player for them. Yeah, uh, again, Brentford fans will be delighted with that because, um, you know, that is... Um... Premier League survival and then some almost top half finish for Brentford. So that is the bottom half of the Premier League. As you can see, the selections of Neil Meller and Paul Robinson as we're edging into the top half now, which is where Crystal Palace finished last season. They finished 10th. Uh, what about you, Neil? Who is the first team to finish in the top half of the Premier League? OK, well, forgive me for my pronunciation, but I'm trying to pronounce his name. So it's Fabian Herzegler. <laughs> Herzler, I think. Yeah, I think so. Herzler. Yeah. Herzler. He's, he's, he's younger than me. Um, but yeah, he's, he's the Brighton manager. Obviously, really like Brighton under De Zerbe. I would have put Brighton higher if De Zerbe would have stayed there. But because of this new manager, maybe you've got them too high. You, you know, maybe I've got Brighton a little bit too high because he's a little bit unknown. He, he comes with a good reputation, very young. I think Brighton have a good squad. I, I do think they have a good squad. 
Uh, Ped, well, I don't think they had enough goals last season. I thought they had a lot of injuries, a lot of injuries last season, which did affect them. Um, in terms of re- recruitment, um, don't know a great deal about the players they've, they've brought in. Uh, lost Lalana, lost Gross. I thought that was a massive loss for them. Gross um, in midfield for them. Pre-season, they went to Japan. They won all four games. They beat QPR as well when they came back. So I've got Brighton as a mid-table team, but a little bit unknown. They, they could be a lot lower with this new manager because I don't believe he'll be as good as what deserve he was. Yep, but also he could be a lot higher. This is the unknown factor with Brighton. This guy's thirty-one. Uh, the, he joined from Sam Pelli, who played second-flight football in uh, in in Germany. Managed fifty-five games, won thirty-six of them. And the players, oh, what I like about Brighton is you play Brighton. I know this is a Sheffield United from from last season, and an unknown eighteen-year-old will stick a world in, and you go, "Where's this guy come from?" And it's just it's just the scouting network for Brighton. It's like Moneyball. It's just so effective. So. Uh, Brighton are 10th. Um, I, I'm just having a look at the Premier League to see if there's any teams you've actually agreed on in the same position. At the moment, Leicester City in 17th is the only one you've agreed on. Uh, but 10th, for Paul, who are you picking? Just press repeat what Neil's just said. I've got Brighton. Brighton. Just quite simply because 10th is middle of the table and who knows what you're going to get from them. Like you said, the players that they brought in, their recruitment network, their scouting networks from all over the world. And when we do Brighton games, you cover Brighton games, you have to do a lot of homework early on in the season to, to look at these players that they've brought in. Um, yeah, they've lost Alana, lost Pascal Gross, Fabian Hurt, so the new manager coming in 31. You, you generally don't know. I think they, they tailed off a little bit, finished 11th last season. And I, I wrote the bottom half of my table out and I thought, looked at the top 10 and I thought, right, these teams, these teams, well, Brighton ain't going to finish above them. They've got a chance of finishing the bottom half. So I've stuck them at 10th in all honesty because I quite simply don't know what you're going to get. Yeah, the only thing with Brighton, the only consistent thing about Brighton last year was the inconsistency. Uh, won 12, drawn 12, lost 14, which is literally Brighton to a T last season. Right, so Brighton, you both agree, and that's only the second team you've agreed on in terms of the placement for next season's or this coming season's Premier League. Brighton in 10th. Right, Paul, who you've gone for ninth? Maybe surprise you. I think they're going to struggle again this season. Chelsea. I think with a new manager coming in there, they've had a really indifferent pre-season. Got well beaten in the last game of pre-season. Start the season at home against Manchester City. Lost Conor Gallagher, potentially going to lose a lot of players. The turnover of players there, the new manager. The new manager just doesn't doesn't sit with me. I don't know why. I like what Pochettino did at the end of last season. I thought he was just getting a tune out of his players. Got them into the European places right at the end of last season. But I just think there's there's so much at Chelsea. I mean, you look at who's, who's left, Ziyech, Matson. Thiago Silva, Conor Gallagher, just to name a couple. And I think the turnover of players, the, the new manager coming in there, the noises when you're listening to his press conference. I'm not convinced. I think Chelsea will struggle this season. I'm going to go for a ninth place finish for Chelsea. Yeah. Big question marks about Chelsea this season, probably from Chelsea fans themselves. Right. So Chelsea, uh, who finished sixth last season and got qualification for the Conference League playoff, uh, which is not what sure Chelsea are aiming for year after year. Uh, what about. End of this month. <laughs> no, uh, there'll be new European action very soon. Uh, Chelsea ninth for Paul, ninth for you, Neil. You won't hear me say Chelsea for a while. I've gone for West Ham, and I think the change will be a, a big thing for West Ham. And I think we'll see a lot of inconsistency because of that. I mean, in terms of the managerial change, David Moyes has gone, Lopetegui's come in. I like the recruitment. I have to say, I do like some of the players he's brought in in Kilman in in Somerville, Paul Krug absolute handful you know really enjoyed watching him for Dortmund I thought he was outstanding in the Champions League final caused Real Madrid a lot of problems could have had a couple of goals so um, he to liken him to somebody like sort of an Andy Carroll I think the West Ham fans will love him it, the ball in the box he will cause absolute carnage so I think the West Ham fans will really like him I'm looking forward to watching him I think it'll be competitive sort of 7th, 8th, ninth, and I think West Ham fall in that bracket of Will they get into a European place or not? And I've got them just outside because it's his first season and I think there might be a little bit of inconsistencies. They've had some bad results pre-season. They've lost to Wolves, lost to Crystal Palace as well. Not that pre-season results matter, but I just think the change will be inconsistencies. But really looking forward to seeing full crew in a West Ham shirt. Uh, West Ham, who finished ninth last season, are going to finish ninth this season, according to Neil Mellor, as we're edging ever closer to these European spots. Now, in fact, uh, Manchester United finished eighth last season, uh, qualification for the Europa League phase. Um, so, who is finishing eighth this time around? Neil, you're going first on this one. 
Newcastle. I think it'll be an unsettled season for them. I think there'll be a lot of pressure on the manager. He has to be up there near the top four places. And if he's not, he will become under pressure. I really do think that. They missed out on Europe because United incredibly beat City in the FA Cup final. So no European football for Newcastle. The big thing for Newcastle is... Can they keep hold of the main man, Isaac? He is unbelievable. Can they keep hold of Gordon? You know, the speculation about him. They've still got some good players, Bruno Gramirez as well there. But I just don't see Newcastle as sort of a fourth, fifth place team. I see them dropping down a bit. And I think it'll be a little bit unsettled with will the manager stay this season or not. So I've got them down as eighth. Uh, which is a, a, a league place lower than seventh last season. They actually finished twenty. Uh, they actually conceded twenty nine more goals last season than the season before. And of course, with Newcastle and their transfer dealings, they've got to start looking at balancing the books. So that might affect them as well. Uh, eighth for Newcastle, then says Neil. Who's finishing eighth for you, Paul? West Ham. Uh, I think with Lopetegui going in there, I like Neil. I'm impressed with the recruitment, but I think there's going to be a big change. There's a lot of talk about David Moyes and how pragmatic he was, and he's counter-attacking football, defensive style of football, that's not going to change overnight. Like you say, they've had an indifferent pre-season, big turnover of players coming in, but a lot of quality players coming in. Um, Somerville from Leeds, obviously somebody that I've watched first-hand closely. I think he'll give them a real attacking threat down that left-hand side. Jared Bowen on the right-hand side and with Fulcrug down the middle, I think they'll cause teams problems next season. But I just can't I just can't see him breaking into those European places just yet. The manager, it's a fantastic recruitment in the manager, but I don't think you're going to see that bigger change in West Ham. So what were they last season? Ninth. So a place higher than last year, I'll give them eighth this year. Uh, yeah, you've uh, put him uh, a place higher. So uh, with West Ham, you pretty much agree because uh, Neil had West Ham as ninth, which is where they finished last season, and you have them just a place higher, which, to be fair, could actually just mean the same amount of points, uh, just a place higher. Uh, the West Ham finished on 52 points last season, uh, which was eight adrift of uh, Manchester United, who did finish eighth. None of you have gone from Man United to finish as low as that this season. We're moving up to seventh. Paul, you got to finish seventh in the Premier League. Newcastle. I mean, we've, we're pretty consistent. We've, we've got teams in and around the same areas. We might not have put them in exactly the same positions, but bar one or two placings, I think we've been pretty consistent. And Newcastle, for all those reasons, the, 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 the noises about Eddie Howe and the England job are not going to go away. Uh, from a personal point of view, touching on that, the England job doesn't come around very often. I mean, you know, he could be under real pressure in January at Newcastle. Newcastle don't get off to a good start. His job could come under threat there. And he's, he's not got the opportunity to be the England manager like he has now, if that is the case. If you get the opportunity to be the England manager, for me, you take it and you come out of England management at whatever point and you, your stock's higher because his, his stock will still be high at club level anyway. I think the speculation around the manager, the FFP, the PSR, holding on to players, this will rumble on all the way to the, to the end of the window. Defensively, leak too many goals. If they get gay in, I think that'll be a good signing. But yeah, the inconsistency. And they, they, they lost a couple of times at home last year and I was surprised. So I've got Newcastle in seventh this year. Okay, uh, Newcastle seventh uh, as they finished last season, seventh as well. Uh, you had Newcastle as eighth. Neil, who have you gone for seventh? I've got a team that finished slightly higher than we expected last season, but they did finish seventh the season before. I've got Aston Villa. I thought they had a brilliant season last season. Um, how will they cope with playing Champions League football? I don't know. Losing Douglas Louise was a massive blow, we have to say that. I think Watkins had a brilliant season. Can he repeat it? Ross Barkley, good signing. You know, I thought that was a good signing. Philogene back to the football club as well. Uh, who else did they bring in? They brought in Onana, Matson. So, so they're, a, they're, a good, they're a good squad. But, but I think it will be competitive for sort of fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. And Villa will just fall a little bit lower than that. So I've got Villa as seventh. By the way, they're one of the, the teams in the Premier League that have played the most games in pre-season. Played about eight or nine games pre-season. That's a lot of games in pre-season. So Villa down in seventh for me. Um, as as ex professional footballers yourself, right? Uh, there are certain teams have only played two or three games in pre season. Does does playing more games help gel a team, or is it is it too many games too soon that can tie you out for the first game of the season? I don't know. I, I, is eight games too many? For me, it makes no difference. You don't read anything into pre season. I mean, Carl Walker's not played one game. You look at the teams that certain managers are picking and putting out in pre-season, it's all about getting minutes into players' legs. This weekend for Premier League teams, when they're playing their so-called flagship pre-season games, is where you'll start seeing a little bit of team shape. You'll start seeing a little bit of style that the manager wants. 
But pre-season is very, very hard to, to read anything into it. Look at the squads. I mean, even the likes of Jaden Sancho is frozen out of Manchester United, played a big part in pre-season. You look at the youngsters at certain clubs, the squads are rotated, minutes are given, and it's very, very hard for me to read anything into pre-season. Yes, they've played eight games, but I guarantee you, you look at the minutes that the players have played, it'll be averaged out all about the same through the squad. OK, thank you. Uh, Aston Villa, seventh for Neil Mellor. They also signed Philogene as well, who was just unbelievable for Hull City, scored some outrageous goals in the Championship last season. They were the surprise package last year, as chosen by one Mr Paul Robinson, who's yet to uh, tell us where Aston Villa are finishing. Has he gone for sixth? We'll find out soon, because that's where we're looking next. Picking first on this one is Neil, sixth in the Premier League. Got Manchester United in, in sixth place. Yeah, I don't think they'll be good enough to get into the top four places this this year. Um, top scorers last year, what was it? Um, Bruno Fernandes and Hoyland on 10 goals. I don't think they score enough goals, and that's been consistent for the last few seasons for United. Um, they're in Europe. They're in the Europa League because they won the FA Cup. If you look at the recruitment, uh, the new centre-half, Yoro, got injured, which is a big blow for three months. They've lost Varane. Uh, who else have they lost? They've lost um, Martial, Greenwood. I think Rashford will have a better season. I do think Rashford will have a really good season. I watched him closely in pre-season. They played Liverpool. And I was thinking, Ten Hag stayed. Did the fans really want him to stay? I don't think maybe there was a better option out there. So I think he'd be under pressure straight away. But I think United will improve to a level where they're not sort of 8th, ninth, the sort of 5th, 6th. So I've got them in six. They, didn't, they weren't great pre-season. It wasn't like, oh my God, United are back. No, I don't think we'll see United back this season. Six for me. Okay, thank you. I do think the fans could turn on Eric uh, Ten Hag very quickly if they don't get up and running. Uh, there is uh, pressure on him because I do get the sense sometimes he's hanging on just to that job at Old Trafford. Right, so sixth for Manchester United, which is actually two places higher than last season. What about you, Paul Robinson? Who have you gone for sixth? Sixth for Manchester United. I oh, think there we it are. was a poor decision to keep an Eric Ten Hag. I, I just don't get it. I think the FA Cup saved his job. And I think the noises that came out about doing the managerial assessment or whatever it is that they called the, the, the review, the season review, after they'd already interviewed three people for his job. So we'll interview three people for your job and then we'll have your season review and then decide that you can stay because maybe the other three weren't, wasn't the right time or they weren't right for us. Don't get it at all. Don't see him been there beyond Christmas. But it's a massive football club and they've got a, a bunch of quality players. They could struggle at the start of the season with the injuries that they've got. I think um, Martinez is the only fit centre-half that they've got at the moment. Johnny Evans came off ill. wan is heavily linked with a move to West Ham. Um, Harry Maguire's injured. You don't know what's going to happen with Jaden Sancho. The recruitment, OK, it's, you know, it's, they've got Lenny Yoro in. Great signing, but he's injured as well. I just think the start of the season could be a struggle for Manchester United. Looking at the fixtures, where do they start the season? The Friday night at home to Fulham. That's not going to be an easy game for them. I've just got Manchester United with a little bit of uncertainty. A change of manager around Christmas time, ended up with a good finish of the season, finishing sixth. Uh, of course, they lost at home to Fulham last season as well. So Manchester United, uh, they are sixth for both Neil and Paul. I think that's the third team where you've agreed. I'm just looking at this now. Leicester City in 17th. You both agreed on that. You also had, both had Brighton in 10th and you've both gone for Manchester United in Sixth, as we move into the top five, which is now a qualification place for the Europa League. Uh, it was Spurs who finished fifth last season. Paul, you're going first on this one. Who have you got to finish fifth? Well, this well, our top six, top five are going to vary, aren't they? Because Neil's still not mentioned Chelsea and Chelsea down in ninth for me. So I've got Spurs and Villa to swap places. I'll, I'll reveal my hand. I've got Villa in fifth and Spurs in fourth this season. I think European football will be a benefit for Spurs this season. I think the Champions League may be a slight hindrance for Villa, but I really like the recruitment, what they've done. Big spenders, possibly the biggest spenders in the market. Illin Jr. is a player that I like. Ross Barkley bringing a bit of experience into that side. Really good additions. Anana, I think they've overpaid for him, but I think he's a good player. He's a better player in a Belgium shirt, so I think in a good side he'll play better. Douglas Louise will be a big loss for them. Um, but yeah, Philogen, the player that they let go, brought him back in as well for big money. Just think that the Champions League might be a little bit of a distraction, but I like Matson coming in. I think they've added pace in the fullback areas. And if he wants to play that high line, he needs to play with quick fullbacks, which he's got now. But heart and head one, that was for me. I've gone for Villa fifth and Spurs into fourth. There we are. So the top, uh, the fourth and fifth have been revealed both at the same time. What about you, Neil? Just fifth, who are you going for? Yeah, I think it'd be really close, fourth and fifth. 
um, this year, Chelsea and Spurs. I think it will be good enough this year, fifth place for Champions League. It wasn't last year. We know that it most likely will be in, in a lot of years, but it wasn't last year. I think it will be this year. So fifth for me will be Spurs. They finished the season horrendously. They've lost five of the last seven games. We all thought they'd won the league by October. I think Spurs fans were celebrating the Premier League title by October, but obviously it's a long season. Uh, like the manager, like his style of play. The recruitment has, has has been tight in terms of they've got a good squad. They've cleared a couple out and a couple in where you're thinking, OK, I think Spurs are going to be similar to last season. Just missed out on the top four because of that end, terrible end of the season. I think they'll just miss out again. So I've got them in fifth place because for me, I think Chelsea will be back in the top four. I think Chelsea finished the season brilliantly. One defeat in 15. Um, changed the manager, but I still think there's enough quality there. Pre-season's not gone well. There's been a lot of criticism. Got beat uh, a few different teams. City, Real Madrid, drew with Wrexham. I think Chelsea will be back in the top four this year. Um, and that's why I've got them finishing just ahead of Spurs. Uh, so fourth has been revealed as well. And this is where you've actually agreed there or thereabouts, roughly with the same teams in the same part of the Premier League table. Um, but Chelsea, I think, is one of where you agree, you disagree the most, because you have Chelsea down at ninth, Paul, and you have Chelsea at fourth, uh, which is a big change. I don't know about Chelsea. There's so many question marks. I've no idea. They're such a difficult team, aren't they? Because they're just Chelsea on the these days. You just don't Look at the squad that they've got. Okay, Moresco's come in and, and his style of play may suit some of them players. They've got some good players, really good players. Look at the midfield. Lavi is back fit. I think he'll play a role this season. Um, Casado, Enzo Fernandez. They're, they're losing Gallagher, but I don't think that's a massive blow, I'll be honest. I think there's enough quality there. Palmer, what a player he was last season. I think if they can get a centre forward, I know Jackson got a few for them, that could be the missing link for them. I really do think Chelsea will be right in the mix for sort of top four or five, which will be back in the Champions League next season. Yeah. The vo- the t- I was about to say exactly that. They had good players last season. Uh, and for whatever reason, it didn't click. And it's also, I don't want to spend too much time on Chelsea. We're going to look into the top three. But uh, Posh just seemed to start to get it right. I just thought that he just started to get Chelsea ticking. They had they picked up form at home. They were winning games, scoring plenty. And I thought, you know what? He's starting to stretch his legs a little bit at Stamford Bridge. And then they let him go. And they start all over again. And I just... I how just, very, how very Chelsea, eh? How very Chelsea. How very Chelsea. <laughs> how very Chelsea. Right. So we're now into the top three. The top three last season were Man City first, Arsenal second, Liverpool third. Are you going for exactly the same this time around? Uh, third... Paul, who have you gone for? Do you want an answer to am I going exactly the same this time around? I've, or do you got, want a, third? I've got a gut feeling the answer is going to be yes. And I, I, do you know what? I'm going to put Liverpool I'll, I'll down clue, as third. Yeah, I'll give you a clue. I'm in third place, I've got Liverpool. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's what I wrote. <laughs> <laughs> Why Liverpool third? Just, I just think that with a new manager coming in, Jurgen Klopp's going to leave a big void uh, as much as you, know, you say that the team's there. The, the squad of players are there. There's, there's going to be a change in style. The new manager's going to want to come in and be himself. He's not going to want to be Jurgen Klopp. They've signed nobody. They've lost Matip, Thiago, goalkeeper Adjan, which won't be much of a loss. I think there's still transfer business to be done. I think there's players to come in. You look at the, the, the European competitions and the South American competitions in Diaz and Nunez. I think they've got two players that are really in form. It'll be, it'll be hard to recruit to, to get better than what they've got in those areas. There's going to be talk about Mo Salah's future all season yet again. I just think Liverpool are where they are. I don't think there's, you look at the league below them, I don't think there's anybody better than them that will finish higher than them. And I think if you look at Man City, Arsenal, I don't think Liverpool are going to finish higher than them. So I think it's pretty much as, as you were. Uh, Liverpool third for Paul. Of course, we know that Neil's got very, very close connections to Liverpool Football Club. I've got the research of all the football clubs here and all the transfer dealings, etc., etc. And it says here, major ins for Liverpool, none. They are the only Premier League side to not bring a player in. But the manager, new manager, has said uh, it would be a surprise for all of us if we don't bring any player in. So they may still make one or two signings. So third for Liverpool, says Paul. Neil Meller, former Red. What about third for you? Yeah, I think top three for Liverpool. I I, I think I want to say they're going to be in a title race. I think it's difficult to predict that with Arne Slot's first season. I've gone for third as well for, for Liverpool. I think the style will be slightly different in terms of wanting to play through the thirds a little bit more patiently to what Jurgen Klopp did. 
He'll play with two defensive midfield players. So Liverpool won't be exposed to the counter-attack quite as much as last season. The desperate and the, the main position will be defensive midfield. That will be the priority this summer. And somebody will come in, I believe that, in this window. They've got three big players who were coming into the last year of the contract. Now, that's going to be hovering over Liverpool all season. Mo Salah, Virgil van Dijk and Trent Alexander-Arnold. That story will rumble on for all players all season unless they sign contracts. I think that might be a little bit unsettling off the pitch. So, uh, first season for Arne Slot, I think Liverpool will be top three. And his, one of his biggest attributes, Arne Slot as a coach, is his injury record. Liverpool had injuries last year, like a lot of teams, and it really affected them at the end of the season. If his injury record is as good as it has been previously, that may well help Liverpool and an outside chance of being in that title race if the injuries are kind to Liverpool this season. Uh, Liverpool finished third. Uh, they were 82 points last season. They were seven behind Arsenal, which actually, given the the, the, the great season Arsenal had last season, is, is not actually that far off, is it? Seven points. Uh, Arsenal finished second on 89. And it is now between, by process of elimination, we're going to work out who the guys are, uh, Neil and Paul, are fancying to win the Premier League because we're now moving into second place, which has been the home of Arsenal fairly recently. Uh, Neil, you've got first picks on this one. It is now down to Manchester City or Arsenal. Arsenal, who is going to finish the best of the rest? I think it'll be close again. Really do think Arsenal have improved under Arteta. Um, will they get a number nine? Will Arsenal go out and get a number nine? Is that what is that what they're missing? You know, they'll say, well, we scored enough goals. Well, Saka, Saka was your top scorer with 16 last season. Are you going to go and get someone who's going to get you 25 goals next season? I don't think Jesus is the man to do that. I think he'll chip in with goals. I think he'll suit the way Arsenal play. Havertz as well. But will they go and get an Osman? Will they go and get an Isaac and really put themselves right in that title mix better than City? I think that'll be the difference. Will Saliba stay fit all season? Because I think he was unbelievable last season for them. Without Saliba, Arsenal will drop a lot more points. If he stays fit, I think they'll be they'll be right in the mix again. Odegaard as well. No, no international football for him. He's looked fresh pre-season. So, uh, yeah, I think Arsenal will be the real deal again. But I just don't think they'll have enough to, to pip City. At 91 goals they scored last season, uh, as you said, without an out-and-out out striker. You know, there's, there are still certain times when they rely on Eddie Nketiah, although there's plenty of rumours of him uh, leaving the club. And there's that, is it Gukrez, uh, the former Coventry player who, who moved to Portugal? There's plenty to talk about him uh, joining Arsenal, but nothing quite developed. They've just basically strengthened defensively uh, of Arsenal more than uh, attack-wise. So Arsenal finish second behind Manchester City for Neil Mellor. And is Paul Robinson agreeing? Who's finished second for you this coming season? Yeah, I concur yeah. Um, for all the reasons that Neil said. I think Calafiore is a great signing. Gabriel and Saliba were the best defensive partnership last season. Stayed fit along with the goalkeeper, David Rea. That triangle was a key to their success. Defensively, they were very good. In Calafiore, he can play left-hand side of, of the centre-halves or he can play in the left-back area. As Zinchenko, Zinchenko, Kiwio played in that place last year. That was arguably a problem position for them. With Calafiore, he can play there. But I also wonder whether he's just overthinking it again a little bit too much, Arteta. Whether he's going to try and copy Pep in what he does with Ake and play him as that left-sided, left fullback who tucks into the centre of midfield or what John Stones does. Whether we see Calafiore playing as that inverted fullback in the midfield, overthinking it. Do they need a number nine? I mean, you, you touched on the amount of goals that they, they got last season you would argue that a number nine would make them better. Somebody you can guarantee 20, 25 goals a season from. Flip that around. Man City won the Premier League with a false nine without a number nine. A year later, they won it with a number nine with Haaland. Just a different way of playing. But if City click into top gear, they don't lose players. I think, listen, I think Alvarez for them was a, was a great sign. They paid 14 million, got 82 for him. As long as they don't lose many more, I think the squad that they've got is more than capable of doing it yet again. And I think the City band wagon rolls on, which is why I've got Arsenal in second place. Yeah, so you've both gone for effectively how the league table finished last season with Man City champions, Arsenal finished second and Liverpool finishing third. And you've both gone for Manchester City to win the Premier League. Now, one further question then. Uh, Man City won it with 91 points. It did pretty much go to the wire. Arsenal finished second on 89. Do you both see it being, and I'll, I'll, I'll refer this to you first, Neil, do you see it being as tight for the course of the season, not those years when Man City have previously romped to it and they've won it by kind of March, April time. Hope so. Hope so. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean let's be honest, what City won it 
Uh, they've won it six of the last seven seasons. Any chance? It's just it's just becoming a little bit boring. Uh, and and they've dominated the Premier League. Whilst there's a, those 115 charges over the head, it's going to be difficult to say they're the best we've ever seen. They're great to watch. There's no doubt about that. But while those charges are looming over the head, it just seems a little bit like, well, really? Uh, and and so that's how it feels. I think there are, I think Pep could be his last season. I think there could be more made of that. This could be Pep Guardiola's last season. I hope so, because of the job he's done there. He's been absolutely brilliant. But look at the attacking players. They won the league last year. De Bruyne missed half the season, and he's arguably the most creative player they've got. Foden stepped up. Bernardo Silva's an unbelievable player, like Doku. Who's the lad they've just signed as well? Uh, Savino. Don't know a lot yep. about him. But again, he could be a player who you think, oh, where have they got him from? Haaland. Haaland will get you 30 goals. So, uh, yeah, I just think City will be too strong again. And, and Pep's last season, he'll make it seven wins out of eight for the title. Uh, just for an added bonus then, 91 points last season. How many points do you think Man City get? This is complete guesswork. But how many points do you think will win the Premier League title this coming season? Just give us I a number, Paul. I think they left a few out there last season. I think they dropped a couple of points where they would have expected to win. Draws at home. I think they won't do that this season. 94 points wins it this season. Okay. Neil? Yeah. 92, 93, 94. They'll be over 90, won't they? It's, it's covering all options, Neil. Yeah, in the 90s, it'll do somewhere. I'll, I'll put you down as 93, so we've got some difference. <laughs> Uh, thank you, guys. That was really good. So you have predicted how the uh, Premier League 24-25 season will look uh, at the end of the season. You've both gone for the three same teams to go down, just slightly different order. So sorry, Southampton, Ipswich and Nottingham Forest fans. Uh, the guys think you're going to be uh, relegated. And the top three exactly the same as last season. Manchester City to win the title for the fifth consecutive time. Arsenal to finish second. Liverpool to finish third. Neil and Paul, thank you so much. Uh, we will be back through the course of the season with previews of every match day for the Premier League. Until next time, take care. 